Welcome back. This is Vince Riley, CFI AA Fixed Wing Rotor Wing for our Part 2 Flying in Class B Airspace. Since we covered most of the actual nuts and bolts of getting in and out of Class B airspace in the first video, um, we're just going to focus on flying in and around Atlanta airspace. We'll kind of review some of the VFR visibility and cloud clearance requirements for operating in the Class B. And then also, we're going to go through a couple examples, maybe coming into Fulton from the northwest and, and uh, from the southeast to kind of give you an example of how it would work. You know, Atlanta is a pretty big section of airspace. A lot of international flights in and out of Atlanta consistently. Luckily, there's no other major airports in the vicinity, so uh, compared to Los Angeles or Dulles or some of those areas, Atlanta seems a lot more simple, and that's why we're using Atlanta as our second example. Eventually, in the next video, we're going to cover Los Angeles and kind of talk about that really dense airspace. I mentioned in the part one video that a good idea if you're not familiar with the Class B airspace is to give them a call and find out what their peak times are and kind of avoid them. So to be true to my example, I looked up the number and I'll show you how to get that number later in this video And when I told him what I wanted and then approached the guy was so helpful. He said, well, what are you trying to do? And I said, well, I'm, I'm flying into Fulton. I want to avoid your peak times. What, what's the best time? And he said, VFR, IFR. And I said, uh, VFR. He said, you know what? If the weather's good, it doesn't matter. We'll handle you anytime you you come in we're willing to help uh, that's the most important thing about remembering ATC's role their job is to get us where we're going not to keep us out but to facilitate us going to where we're going so remember that as a refresher, remember the ADS-B requirements is anytime you're inside the 30 nautical mile ring, or if it's a smaller airport with a 20 nautical mile ring, you can't fly in there without ADS-B below that area, even from the surface all the way up to 10,000 feet. And then remember, Class E airspace above 10,000 feet, you have to have ADS-B. The only exception is excluding 2,500 feet AGL and below. So uh, one way to get an exception is to call ATC and tell them you need to go into Fulton or somewhere to get some maintenance done on the aircraft or get ADS-B be installed and then they'll apply an exception and give you a time period where you can come in. So I had mentioned that flyaway chart and remember you can download these in the form of a PDF but if you look at this flyaway chart you really can see that they've got these little highways and to be able to facilitate traffic moving in and around Atlanta without having to be involved in the Class B airspace they give you an idea of what altitudes to maintain for each of those sectors. For example if you're transitioning just north of Atlanta uh, westbound in the sector just north of Fulton County, the little highway mentions that below 5,000 feet. So it's actually telling you by looking at this map and simplifying it for you, if you don't want to figure out everything, just fly below 5,000 MSL through this whole area and you're outside of Class B airspace. Another really good resource as you get into the more busy airspace, the margin area, like the left side of the flyway chart, actually has real specific information about certain transitioning routes, certain frequencies, any special notes that ATC wants you to know that make it easier for you as a pilot to be able to transition through or into their Class B airspace. All right, let's look at the first example. I said maybe you're coming into Fulton from the northwest. Looking at the flyaway chart, again, one of the routes shows as long as we stay below 5,000 feet, technically we don't even need to talk to Atlanta. Just a quick look at the uh, VFR sectional to determine what altitudes the Class B begins at, or look at the flyaway chart, which in this example tells us to fly below 5,000 feet en route to Checkpoint Dallas. Ultimately, we'll need to descend below 3,500 because Fulton is in that area of Class B airspace descends down to 3,500. If we are flight following with Atlanta approach at some point, they will tell us the frequency change and give us the frequency for Fulton. Or if it's an untowered airport, they'll tell us the frequency change to the local CTAF frequency. I want you to learn something that you can take away and share with other people. So this next example, when we're flying into Atlanta from the southeast, or we're flying to Fulton from the southeast, we're going to do it through the iPad. So I can kind of show you some of the features on the iPad that make it a, a wonderful resource with ForeFlight installed. In this example, we're going to go from Baldwin County down to the southeast, which is Kilo Mike Lima Julia. It's the identifier. Uh, fly northwest into Fulton, and we'll kind of talk how we're going to do that. First of all, for our flight planning, remember the easiest way to figure out how to get in and out of Class B airspace is to look at their flyway charts. If we just zoom in to the flyway chart, we'll notice that part of our route carries us right through the surface area of the Class B airspace. If you hold your finger down on the route, you'll see a blue circle appear. At that point, you can drag the route to any point you want. We're just going to drag it up to Stone Mountain. We're going to use that as a checkpoint, do a little sightseeing on the way up there. Now we can check the airspace, make sure we're not flying through any uh, restricted areas. We can get our frequencies, get an idea of where we're going to be flying. One of the wonderful things that you can do with ForeFlight is if you select the point on the route, you can actually adjust, just like I'm doing here, the altitude for that segment of the route. 
Another nice thing about ForeFlight is looking at the uh, flight plan. Uh, you can actually go to the profile view and then see what altitude you've chosen and how that conflicts with the airspace that you're going to be flying through. This example, I, I set it to 3,000, but in all actuality, if you look at the route, it touches a teeny corner just southeast of Stone Mountain, where it goes across an area that's actually a 3,000 foot floor. So 25, 28, 29, probably better altitude. Notice once we change that altitude, it actually gives us a, a little visual reminder next to the lat long that we're at flight level 30 for 3000. And here's an example of that profile view I was talking about. Now by default, since I fly out here in the Rocky Mountains most of the time, my default profile is 10,500 and you can see that automatically took us into the Class B. So by going to the profile view, we can actually select different altitudes for the, the flight. When we zoom in, we can actually see this route works out really nice because the first checkpoint entering in the 30 nautical mile ring is a VFR checkpoint called Covington. So we could actually call that we're at Covington, certain altitude, inbound for uh, Fulton. All right, now for a quick review. Um, remember, ATC is there to help facilitate you and assist you wherever you're going. Familiarize yourself with the VFR corridors and procedures on the terminal area chart and flyaway charts and the uh, airport facility directory or the uh, chart supplement. Before flying, get familiar with the airport, their procedures, and any particular things you need to know as a pilot. Don't hesitate to ask for help or clarification. If they tell you to call a checkpoint that you're unfamiliar with, uh, it's okay to ask them, what am I looking for? Make sure anytime you leave an area that's touching surface class B, you can't even take off until you get clearance through clearance delivery. So either call them on the phone or call them on the uh, radio before you call ground control to get your clearance and let them know which direction you're departing, uh, which ATIS information you have, and where your, your destination is. And they'll give you your clearance uh, transponder squawk and a departure frequency to be able to talk to uh, departure control. And remember, ads be on altitude modes at all times, even while operating on the ground. All right, so as I promised you earlier in the, the video that I was going to show you how to find those ATC phone numbers, uh, they're found in the chart supplement, what used to be called the airport facility directory. And if we open it up on the iPad, I'll show you a little tip I use to be able to find pages that I refer to often. Um, so what I do, I'll go to the uh, table of contents. You can click directly on it so I know where it's found. So I go to that page, I turn on the highlighter, and then I highlight the whole page. I do this a lot in the regulations to highlight areas uh, that I refer to quite often. And then you'll notice when you close that highlighted page, uh, the page will actually show up on the timeline there on the bottom when you're looking at the uh, extended view of the document. So I'll just close this after I get it highlighted. And then if you look along the bottom, you'll see that green highlighted page. You can literally just go over to there, click it with your finger, or when you open it up, You'll see your highlighted pages, click in the vicinity of that highlighted page, and then just scroll until you get closer to it, and boom, the page is right there. I wanted to add this to the end of the video, and I think we'll just add some reviews each time I do an airspace class. So let's look at the Atlanta area, so that's what we're talking about. And you're right here where this arrow is, at 13,500 feet, what airspace are you in? That's right, Class E airspace. Also, what are your visibility and cloud clearance requirements? Remember F-111, so anywhere above 10,000 feet in Class E, F-111. F for 5, statute miles visibility, 1,000 feet below clouds, 1,000 feet above clouds, and 1 statute mile horizontal from the clouds. Do you need ADS-B here? Definitely, because you're above 10,000 feet, you have to have ADS-B, and you're within the 30 nautical mile ring of that Class B airport. So for the second example, uh, you know, we came in to Fulton from the northwest of Atlanta, so let's talk about some visibility and cloud clearance requirements here. If we're at Checkpoint Dallas at 2,500 MSL, what airspace are we in and what are our visibility and cloud clearance requirements? You can look at the floor of the Class B airspace in that sector, which is 6,000. So we know we're definitely not in Class B airspace, but are we in Class E airspace? Because remember, Class E and then around airports, this is the shaded area. Class E in this area begins at uh, 700 feet AGL. Well, we've got an altimeter, shows us 2,500 feet MSL. Um, we can look at the nearby tower, kind of gauge how high we are, but there's an easier way to do that. We can actually turn that on for flight to be able to tell us how high we are in AGL. We're going to push the Show Hide Instruments button. That's going to bring up the instruments on the bottom of the map page. 
Then we can select any of the instrument sections to be able to bring up all of the selectable areas. So in the instrument section, we're just going to select height AGL, and then so at all times while we're out there flying, it's going to display our altitude. Of course, while I'm sitting on the ground preparing this class, it's not going to show anything. So in the vicinity of the Dallas checkpoint, um, we're definitely above 700 feet AGL because we're inside the shaded magenta. So we're in Class E airspace. So what are your visibility and cloud clearance requirements? So on this one, remember, Cessna 152. Cessna is the third letter in the alphabet, three statute miles visibility, 1,000 foot above, 500 foot below, and 2,000 foot horizontal. Cessna 152. Is ADS-B required in Class E airspace below 10,000 feet? Remember, the Dallas checkpoint is just inside the 30 nautical mile ring of Atlanta's airspace, so we definitely have to have ADS-B even at this low altitude. All right, if you like this class, I hope it was helpful. Give me a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe because the next class coming out is going to be Class B airspace in the vicinity of Los Angeles. And here's two additional videos that you might enjoy watching.